Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. In the presence of the Lord, think of your favorite person in the whole wide world, your mother, your best friend, your spouse, or probably your grandmother. There are many persons who you love and enjoy being in relationship with. Some of them might be very near to you. Others, you are on the phone with them daily or frequently, and others you don't talk with all the time, but when you meet up, you just have a great time together. But the favorite, that one stands out most of all. You think about them every day. There is nothing too great that you would not do for your favorite person. Your love for your favorite person is second to none. Now, I know that somebody is going to tell me that their favorite person is Jesus. That's great. But there are many of us, we were not thinking about Jesus. But let us talk about Jesus. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanished, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. That is the refrain of a song in the presence, in his presence, written by Terry McMillan and released in 2005. But what happens in the presence of the Lord? Maybe we should make something clear. All over the Psalms, we read about the writers being in the presence of the Lord. I suspect that many of the beautiful Psalms that came from David, for example, were written as he was in the presence of the Lord, just the two of them. It sounds idealistic. It sounds almost like like fiction. It sounds metaphorical. But my friend, it is real. Being in the presence of the Lord is something that is real, and it is the privilege made available to every child of God to enter into his presence as often as you desire. Hebrews 10 verses 19 and 20 speaks about us having confidence to enter into the most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. You are invited to come into his presence, to enjoy fellowship and to interact with God at any time. Jacob was not the nicest Christian in the Bible, but Jacob knew about the presence of God. In Genesis 32, Jacob had an encounter with God. He was on a journey back to his former home and heard that Esau, the brother he had swiped the birthright from, was coming towards him. Jacob took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons and all his possessions across the ford of the Jabbok. He was alone, nobody with him no earthly possession to show as his own. That night, Jacob met God. Jacob found himself wrestling with God and he would not let God go. I will not let you go until you bless me, Jacob said. That night, in that encounter, God changed his name from Jacob to Israel because he who have struggled with God and with humans and overcome. Jacob came away from that encounter a changed man. Physically, he walked with a limp where his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with God. But spiritually, Jacob was changed. No longer was he the conniving man who tricked his father, his mother, his brother-in-law, his father-in-law. That encounter with God caused Jacob to step into his destiny with God, becoming the third patriarch of the great nation of Israel, and all because he was in the presence of the Lord. Joshua succeeded Moses as the one God chose to lead the Israelites into the promised land. He was a fierce soldier who served Moses faithfully for 40 years. The book of Joshua starts off with a strong message or mandate from God and ended with this famous verse, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 and verse 9. When God tells you something, hold on to it. Because five chapters later, Joshua met God. At first, Joshua thought it was a warrior and was ready to do combat, but he soon realized that he was in the presence of God, literally. From very early in their encounter, Joshua was told to take his shoes off, for the place where you are standing is holy. 
Joshua did. And eventually we read how Joshua got clear instructions from God on how to proceed to conquer Jericho. Daniel was a guy in exile who was frequently in the presence of God. In fact, in one instance, when people in the kingdom were asked not to pray to any God, Daniel defied that royal decree and continued to spend time in the presence of God, not once, not twice, but three times every day. Daniel was not just a great bureaucrat in Babylon, but Daniel was a man who had a strong relationship with God. He interpreted dreams and solved mysterious issues like when the hand wrote on the wall in the middle of a royal banquet. During that ban, Daniel was found spending time in the presence of God, praying, and he was found and brought to to justice and declared guilty and thrown in the den of lions. Is that the reward for spending time in the presence of God? My friend, Daniel was rewarded by God himself, who sent one angel to shut the mouth of the lions. Daniel was delivered. John, the the disciple who wrote the book of Revelation, was in the spirit on the Lord's day on a deserted island called Patmos. John found himself in the presence of God, and out of that meeting came the book of Revelation of end times. What an encounter. My friend, We have an amazing privilege and invitation to spend time in his presence, to worship, to talk to him in prayer, to just rest in his presence, to be encouraged, to be strengthened, to hear from him. The presence of God must become your favorite place to be for the child of God because that is a real experience that impacts your life for good. In his presence, there is fullness of joy, says Psalm 16, verse 11. Who or what can match that? The best place to spend some time is in his presence. You will come from there refreshed, blessed, encouraged, filled with joy. Once you experience being in the presence of God in that intimate space, you will want to go there far more frequently.